friends. <laughs> Do I look angelic? Um, long time no speak. This isn't a long introduction. I just wanted to say hi. Thanks for sticking around if you're still here. I'm very sorry that I've not been posting. Um, I've tried lots of times. It's just never come to fruition. I'll try my best. But for now, here's a selection of different meals and or random items that you can try and make. And I'll put the recipes in the description for you. Also, correct, my hair isn't blue anymore. It's now brown and blonde and red. Not that you can really tell in this light, but hey hey. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye. Just making a quick tomato soup for lunch. This is all you need. Just an onion, two carrots. I'm using five somewhat sad smaller ones. Uh, two tins of chopped tomatoes, two tins of cannellini beans, stock enough for 500 mils, extra virgin olive oil to saute your onion and carrots in. And then the original recipe has cream. I'm using silken tofu instead, um, just to make my soup creamy. And then at the end, if you want to, you can add in some fresh basil. The other ingredient not pictured is garlic, just cause mine is frozen. <laughs> so I don't have it out yet. And that's it. Just dice up the onion, carrots and garlic. The garlic should be equivalent to about two cloves if following the recipe that I'm basing this on, but I like it a lot more garlicky. So I've got quite a lot of garlic in there. It's never a bad thing in my opinion. Just don't come too near me. Once the onion, carrot and garlic has sauteed down a bit, just add two tins of tomatoes and then you can just leave it to simmer on a very low heat. The recipe says for 25 minutes, so I'm gonna put it down really low. Once you've simmered your tomato mixture for 25 minutes or so, uh, add your two tins of drained cannellini beans, your stock pot, or just stock as it were, and 500 mils of hot water, or obviously stock if you're not adding them in separately like I do, because I, I'm not someone who melts a stock cube before you're using it because I just don't really see the point. It's going to melt in here just fine. Bring it back up to a little simmer, try it, season it to taste. I've just added a little more salt and some black pepper. I lie, it's garlic pepper because we all know I love garlic pepper. Uh, so that's, uh, that's that one. And then we're just going to add in some silken tofu. Here's one I opened earlier. Look at that, beautiful. <laughs> I find silken tofu so pleasing. And then I'm just going to break it up a little bit just to try and warm it through a little bit before I blend it up. And then it's just a case of serving with some fresh basil. Dake. Now it's blended, I'm just going to heat it through for another couple of minutes and then serve. And that's all folks. Um, I've got my four portions, which is the amount it says it should make. Obviously I subbed my silken tofu for the single cream in the original recipe. Uh, this is 349 grams. The original recipe said 300 mils of single cream. You could of course substitute this with some soaked uh, cashews and blended or of course a vegan cream alternative, or even coconut milk, but I don't like to do that because then everything tastes like coconut milk. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is very similar to a kind of recipe that I make. Um, I wouldn't normally add the additional creamy element and I would probably add celery, which in fairness I would have done today if I had some. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's give this recipe a fair go. So anyway, funnily enough, it did exactly four ladlefuls in each container which is uh, quite pleasing so that's that obviously i've got one for now and i've got three that i'm going to stick in the freezer for a rainy day um just a, a note um when i do label stuff in the freezer which i'm trying to get more in the habit of um i do just have um, labels that i stick on my pots but i found these labels in um lakeland not sponsored obviously but um you know that's just where i found so they peel off um easier after you've uh, used them in the freezer so they're pretty good um i'm sure they probably do them somewhere else as well but that's just where i happened to find them many many moons ago um so since i've got them let's use them so 
uh, yeah, this is a second nature recipe or based on a second nature recipe, just if you're interested in that, but uh, there we go. Guys, I nearly forgot the final touch, a sprinkling of delicately, <laughs> um, savagely chopped basil. <laughs> Um, I do have more left, do, do, do. over here, um, but I'm just going to wait for the soup to cool and then I'm going to stir it into these freezer ones and then that way you get the joy of the basil taste and um, hopefully it should survive the freezer. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. This is everything you need to make gamachio. Just some sea salt. I use molden. It's just in this pot for convenience. Anyone else who uses molden knows that if you, uh, well, as soon as you open it, it just always goes into the box and falls out. So I do tend to try and keep it in this little pot. Um, so you need one teaspoon of uh, good sea salt, nice flaky sea salt, not that rocky stuff, because that won't mash as well. And then um, the proportion is six tablespoons of sesame seeds. So, which is the equivalent of 18 teaspoons, which is how I remember it, just because it's easier. One teaspoon salt, 18 teaspoons sesame seeds. That's it. And all we're gonna do is just dry toast the teaspoon of salt first of all, then we're gonna add in the sesame seeds. And then once it's all golden and toasty, we're just gonna mush it up. And that gives you 19 teaspoons portions <laughs> of the most delicious seasoning, I promise you. So first up, we're just toasting off the salt. As far as I understand it, the only reason you do this is just to remove any excess moisture from the salt. Um, so it's literally just like a minute. You don't wanna end up, um, I mean, does salt burn? I'm not sure. <laughs> but either way, you just uh, it's just to try and make sure it's toasty. Okay, then we add in the sesame seeds and as soon as you start adding them in, because the pan's hot. I don't know if you can hear them starting to crackle there, but basically you need to keep this moving. You want to start getting them golden and toasty. Okay, it's kind of hard to show <laughs> while trying to keep these from burning. This is how I toss them like this. And you can see they're already going golden. Sesame seeds are really small. Um, and they do toast up really quickly. So you just need to keep a really good eye as you're doing this and the smell is phenomenal. <laughs> okay, so within literally like two minutes, we've reached optimum toastiness, as you can see. And all I'm gonna do is just decant into my pestle and water. And then we just grind. And you wanna keep doing this until it's not completely a powder, but certainly so that they're broken down a lot. I've literally just started doing it and already the smell is phenomenal because it releases all that lovely toasted sesame smell as you grind it. Oh, I can't describe it guys. I just honestly, please try this recipe. It's so good and so simple. So it's kind of hard to show up on the video, but this is broken down a lot. So, this is normally about the texture I take it to. Um, so you've still got some whole pieces in there, but you can hopefully tell that it's uh, powdery as well, because a lot of these are like the little shells of the sesame seeds that are broken down. I might just do it a tiny bit more. But basically once, once you've got it done to the texture that you want, um, I just normally put mine in a glass lock container and then it'll last, um, I think it's, I think they say like up to a week in the fridge. Um, obviously, as I said, there's 19 teaspoons in here in total. So, or just under a teaspoon each because you've ground it down. Um, but yeah, so it should last a little bit. Um, obviously don't eat it all at once because that's a whole teaspoon of salt. Um, but it's, it's a really good alternative seasoning and it's so tasty. So please try this. And here we go, guys, the finished product. That is Gamachio, the world's most simple, delicious, insanely good seasoning. Um, just for clarity, my um, recipe or guidelines that I follow <laughs> is actually from Alicia Silverstone's cookbook. Um, it's not just a cookbook, it's like a whole lifestyle thing, but it's called The Kind Diet. It's been out many, 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 many years. Um, and I've had it for that long, <laughs> but this is the recipe that I just come back to over and over again because it's so, so delicious. I wish there was smell-o-vision. I've said this many times before in my videos, 
but uh, if there was, you'd appreciate why I'm going on about this. So please try this. Here's an example of a very easy lunch featuring gamachio. Um, obviously we've just got some toasted wholemeal pita. This is one pita. And then I've got some carrots. This is two pretty girthy carrots. <laughs> um, two like chunks of cucumber that obviously I've cut into sticks and some mixed cherry tomatoes. And then the hummus is my current favorite thing. Absolutely amazing. The jalapeno hummus by Ramona's. I found this in Tesco. I cannot stop buying it. It's the most insanely delicious hummus in the world ever. Honestly, try this if you can find it. It's so good and it's a huge pot. And if you don't open it, it keeps in the fridge for ages as well. Um, this was the last of mine, hence uh, it's uh, quite a lot, but you know, it's hummus, so I'm always gonna eat a lot of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, the jalapeno, the, the original ones are really good too, but this one, the jalapeno, oh my God, guys, you need to try this, it's so good. Anyway, so this is um, a nice uh, balanced plate to lunch. Um, and uh, as I said, I've just used my gamache as some seasoning for my vegetables instead of putting salt and pepper on, which is honestly what I would normally do. So um, I'm just having sesame seeds instead. Get that magnesium in, baby. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how to make seed crackers. Um, these are really nice. I've made them once before, and I'm happy that the recipe works. So uh, I'll show you guys now. So basically I'll put the quantities in the description, but it's a mixture of chia seeds, ground flax or milled flax seed, um, or linseed, which is the same thing, they're just called different names. Um, also sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds, some salt and pepper, obviously I've used garlic pepper. Um, this dark stuff is a tablespoon of olive oil and then it's just 170 mils of cold water and you just let that sit um, for 15 minutes to all like soak together after stirring it and then you bake it. So I'll show you that bit when I come back to do that. Now, whilst I'm waiting for the uh, seed crackers mixture to amalgamate, which in fairness, you can see it already is, it's been just a few minutes, um, but I like to leave it for about 15 because you really want all of this liquid to be as much absorbed as possible. So that can just sit for as long as possible. Um, I'm also going to, while the oven's on, make uh, like a healthy banana bread. Um, so it's like a low carb version. Again, second nature. If you guys haven't twigged by now, I'm following the second nature program. <laughs> um, so yes, um, I haven't made this banana bread before. So this is a total experiment. So please join me on it. Um, but to prepare for it, I'm starting out making two chia eggs. So this is two tablespoons of chia seeds with five tablespoons of water and um, just let them soak while I prepare the rest of the ingredients. Just been preparing my dry ingredients. First of all, I just blended up 80 grams of oats just into an oat flour. And then I've added a, ta uh, sorry, a teaspoon of baking powder and then 100 grams of ground almonds. Um, they're just in the blender <laughs> container just for convenience a moment. And then I've also got 60 grams of pecans just chopped up. Okay, so wet ingredients. I've got 80 grams of melted vegan butter. Um, the one I've used is Naturally, which is the best one in my opinion. Um, and then I've also got a teaspoon of vanilla extract that I've just stirred in. And next I'm just gonna mash three overripe bananas in there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add in my chia egg, which is now looking very <laughs> solid. <laughs> and I'll also add my um, uh, dry ingredient mix and my pecans. All right, so that's the uh, banana bread mixture just in the loaf tin, ready to go in. It's not very high, um, and I have my doubts as to how much this will rise because the only way it arises with the baking powder and there's only one teaspoon in there for all of that bulk. So we'll see. Um, I'm sure it's gonna taste very nice though. It's just naturally sweetened with the banana 
and you've got some fat in there from the uh, pecans and the butter. Anywho, let's move on to these seed crackers again. Sorry for the light, uh, the sun is shining directly behind me. Here's the seed cracker mixture. All we do is take a baking tray, which is hiding here. <laughs> Um, and we're just gonna spread it out in as much of a rectangle as possible on here. Top tip, you just need to get another piece of baking paper ready for this one, because you have to flip it part way through and then you kind of transfer to the other one. <laughs> so wish me luck spreading this out, because last time I managed to make it quite patchy. Guys, I'm trying so hard. <laughs> um, the aim with this is about, um, a quarter, I think it's a quarter of a centimeter, which is like two and a half millimeters. Um, like I said, last time I got a bit over enthusiastic and made it a bit patchy. Um, this time I'm hoping I get it a bit better. I also made them a little bit thin last time, um, so they did break really easily. So just a tiny bit thicker, certainly won't hurt anything. Um, this is quite thick still, so I'll show you in a sec. Okay, not gonna lie, I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> um, this is the most time consuming part, just doing this bit. Um, but honestly, it doesn't have to be this neat. I was just trying to make a really nice one for you guys to see. Um, so the last thing to do before popping it in the oven is just to score um, where you want the crackers to be. They say to do it about halfway down. Again, last time I cut most of the way down and it was absolutely fine. They broke nice and easily. So I'm just gonna divide this up somehow. Okay, yeah, so this time um, I've just gone four and four. Um, they're quite a nice cracker size. Perfect. <laughs> So um, yeah, I definitely have done it thicker than last time um, because last time it was definitely pretty much all the way to the edges of this baking sheet. And um, as I said, it was a lot thinner. And also I think I did it into 24 pieces, but some of them were a little bit smaller than this. So we'll see how this one turns out. But for now, with these two creations, it's time to pop them in the oven, which I've had preheating at 180. Sorry about the light. <laughs> Conveniently, the banana bread needs 40 minutes and those seed crackers need 20 minutes on each side. So nice and easy. Oh my God, I was in the other room and I nearly didn't hear the beeps for the 20 minute <laughs> timer. So um, uh, yes, banana bread has actually risen um, a decent amount. So that's good. So obviously there's another 20 minutes to go and I'm just gonna flip these seed crackers. Here they are at the moment. And as you can see, already looking a little bit solid. So all we do is just pop this on top and then kind of flip. So uh, yeah, I'll have to put you down. Okay, we're flipped. Underside is looking soggy, steamy, etc. But in it goes, another 20 minutes. There's been a development. It's very serious. <laughs> I thought the banana bread was done after the 40 minutes and I turned it upside down and shook it um, and it fell apart probably because I didn't let it sit at all after removing it from the oven. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I've scraped up all of the whole middle part of it, shoved it back in and put it back in the oven for a little bit. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I now do not have high hopes. However, the crackers have turned out really nicely. Please ignore the random bits of uh, banana <laughs> lying around. <laughs> um, anyway, these are the crackers. Um, they're still warm, but as you can see, they break really nicely along those lines. So definitely nice and cooked. There we are, beautiful. So yeah, these will solidify nicely. I mean, they already are, they're crispy and nice, but um, once they're cool, they'll store nicely just uh, on a, um, on the surf, on the um, side, in a like you know glass lock container or whatever your preferred container is. Mine is glass lock. Um, oh, that's a nice crispy one. Yeah, maybe the other bit I've done a bit thick, but this end is quite good. This is more like last time. Yeah, there we go. Oh, a bit more banana. <laughs> As you can tell, some of the cake fell on there. Anywho, um, yeah, so there we go. That's the crackers. Um, oh, I ruined that last one. Damn it, <laughs> I was doing so well. <laughs> but there we go, yeah, so at least they work well. And um, just trust me, they're really, really nice. You can just have them with some hummus or 
vegan cheese or whatever you want really or just as a little snack to nibble on which honestly is what I ended up doing last time because they were so good <laughs> well this was after this had gone back in the oven for a while um I tried a bit and it tastes okay it's just I don't know if it even cooked properly to be honest because it's not like normal oh look it's coming out now typical <laughs> anyway I think we can call this a fail for my first attempt at this banana bread recipe but I'll try it again in future because I'm sure I can make improvements I didn't grease my life tin because when I make my own um, banana bread it um, uh, it never needs greasing so I, it just didn't even occur to me um, yeah so I think the way I'm gonna have to end up eating this um because like because it's got no like added sugar or anything in and it's just oats and almonds really um it's fine as a breakfast food so I may have it like crumbled up with some yogurt or just a piece of it with some nut butter things like that um this is quite stuck this bit though Ooh, I don't want to crumble it up too much so yeah, a um, bit of a fail, but um, if you guys try it, let me know. Um, I thought I'd followed the recipe really, really well, so a bit annoyed about that, but hey ho. I'll put the recipe in the description anyway, like I said, and then if you guys try it, let me know how you get on. Um, I mean, maybe it would have worked better with a proper vegan egg replacer rather than a chia egg, but the recipe did specify that you could use a chia egg, so who knows. Anywho... At least my crackers are looking good. Little beauties, look at that. Um, so they're good, but all in all, it's still food that I can eat and it tastes good. It just doesn't look very good. <laughs> so, oh, well, I tried. Oh, I look all ghostly. <laughs> um, that's actually gonna wrap up this video today, guys. So um, yeah, I will see you next time hopefully you got some ideas from this video <laughs> let me know if you try anything and i'll see you guys soon bye